This is an, an overview of the things that we do on the access technology department at the Lighthouse. So, Sean, I think that the next one. Yes. So just kind of leading into our topic today, we wanted to kind of level set on a couple of definitions. So uh, we wanted to kind of define uh, how we view digital accessibility. Um, so essentially, this is the process for making um, digital products and services such as websites, mobile apps and other web based tools um, available to everyone. Um, it's basically ensuring that all users have uh, access and can use these tools effectively. Um, and basically can access the, the functionalities of digital product services, uh, despite any physical or cognitive differences that they may have. Um, so that's kind of how we think about the idea of digital accessibility. Um, now we wanted to talk a little bit about specifically when we talk about um, access tech or assistive tech, um, how that is kind of defined within the space. So Jeffrey. Yes, uh, these are uh, access technology devices are on um, this all kind of services. It could be a program, it could be a, a it could be a device, it could be a service that allows you to improve or maintain your the capacity of, of people with disabilities. So in, among those products, we can find screen readers, screen magnifiers for low vision users, and we can find all kinds of devices. So we will be talking about a few of them and let's start with, and we, we can say that some of the, for example, if you, everybody on this presentation, we are very, very sure that everybody here has, has access technology today. So if you have an iPhone, if you have an Android, if you're connected to a computer, you have access technology with you. Because basically all of these devices, and you will be seeing that today, has, have options, have settings that allows people with various disabilities, like um, blind users, low vision users, to access the content on these devices. So basically all of the mainstream devices right now will have some kind of access tech on it. Yes, and as Jeffrey mentioned as well, yeah, a few examples there across devices are things like screen readers, spoken content tools, text recognition tools, uh, zoom and magnification, voice access, uh, different contrast modes. Uh, so there's a lot of different capabilities that are built into these devices. Uh, so we're gonna try to give kind of a high level overview of them to give you a feel uh, for what's there. And um, with that, we will start by getting on the debate, which is better, yes. Android or iOS, iPhone versus Android, the classic debate. And for us as instructors, for us, as people that use this technology, we can say that both are great and provide good accessibility. So there, obviously there are some difference, but the mainstream, the main function of the devices, they will provide some kind of access tech. So let's start by that. Like we, we don't try to get too much into the debate, but um, we can say that they will have both will have good accessibility options like screen reader. So um, the screen reader on the iPhone will be the voiceover and the, on the iPad will be the, to uh, sorry, on the Android will be the talkback. And what is a screen reader? Well, a screen reader is a device. It's a, some kind of setting that will read what's on the screen. So every time that I'm using my iPhone or my Android device on my with my talkback or my voiceover every time that I that I put one friend uh, <laughs> one finger on the screen it will read me what's there for example if I put it on the on the setting uh, on, on my main screen and it says settings so I know that that that's the setting then if I swipe to the screen and I hear something like messages I probably will hear FaceTime or if I'm on Android we'll hear on Google Chrome, or we hear Google Duo, or we hear Gmail. So those are, that's the screen reader. It will tell me what's on the screen. So also both will support magnification. So we, we will allow, uh, allow you to enlarge the text that is on the screen, or even zoom in and zoom out for better and even greater accessibility. The, we, we have some users that will, they need that the content is more bigger 
than than other users. So it adjusts and allows uh, and allows you to use different settings. So, like for example, we can get to like a, a two letter, <laughs> two letters just on the screen. So. Uh, we have several options, several ways that you can use the phone, and both will have that. And my, one of the main differences is basically open source, like the Android is open source, and the obviously the the iPhone and the iOS operating system is closed. So will, will you can get a greater um, access. Probably uh, Androids will be a little bit cheaper and you can get a more variety but, but sometimes with that uh, uh could could present some problems because some of them will not have the greater uh the updated operating system and could present some uh some different some differences of there so um, basically if you compare to androids and probably even from the same brand like if they are previous models or one is the newest model probably the accessibility settings on those could vary it whereas on the ios operating system on the iphone usually as soon as a new update is released everybody no matter the 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 phone that they have if they if their phone supports the newer operating system all of them will have the same accessibility settings so that's a little bit of a difference of an android on a, on a, or an iPhone. Thank you, Jeffrey. Uh, yep. uh, so I think those are the main differences. Yes. Um, so now we're going to start to talk a little bit about some of these specific accessibility settings on iPhone and where to access them. Uh, so within, within the iPhone, um, you can open up, uh, if, you, if you tap on the settings app, um, you can then um, scroll down and you will find the accessibility menu and you can then tap on that. And within this menu, um, it highlights all of the available accessibility options. And there is a specific vision related section, which is at the top of the menu. Um, this, control, this contains um, options like voiceover, which is the primary screen reader that we'll talk about in a moment, um, all of the zoom settings, uh, display and text size settings, um, adjustments of motion control of animations on the screen, uh, the spoken content tool, which we're also going to uh, touch on, as well as the ability to enable audio descriptions. So the first thing we want to talk about here is voiceover, um, which is the built-in screen reader, as I mentioned, um, that is on iPhone. And once you turn this on within that accessibility settings menu, it allows you to interact with the phone in a different way. Um, you basically can use um, what we call swiping gestures and tapping gestures um, to interact with different items on the screen and move from one area to the next. And every single item on the screen will be announced to you and described in an audible way. Um, so this allows a user who um, maybe can't see the screen at all um, to still be able to fully access uh, the phone and, and use it. Um, but they just have to learn the, the gestures um, as a way of navigating. Um, no, Jeffrey, is there anything you like to add for voiceover? <laughs> yes, I have here my voiceover. Let's see if we can make it. Monday, May 9th. Can you hear it there? Yes. All right. Mail. So, Lighthouse Exchange. Unread. Nanako era. So let's unread. see here. One facility. Okay. Dot. Mail. 11 unread emails. Okay. I'm, I'm on, my, uh, on my screen here, on my main screen. And Mail. if I Five minutes ago, touch anything on the screen, weather. weather. Maps. Maps. Notes. Notes. Voice memos. Voice memos, TV, TV, voice notes, maps, weather. I am weather. And if I double tap here with the screen, because what happened when you have a screen reader running is that basically you cannot, if you touch without, if you don't have a screen reader running and you touch everywhere uh, on an icon, the icon will be open. But if we do that as blind users, that very, it will be very difficult. So what they do is that uh, once you found the icon that you want to open, then you double tap anywhere on the screen. So I will do hear that on weather. Weather, Alameda, 56 degrees, feels like 52 degrees, partly cloudy, high 58 Ooh, it's degrees. it's a little bit chilly today. <laughs> so that's the way that we can use a little bit of screen reading. And we have a, a short video that will demonstrate that. So we wanted to give you a little yes. bit of a demo of what, how the screen reader works. All right. Screen lock. So we're going to play it now. VoiceOver makes everything on your screen aloud, so you can use your iPhone or iPad without seeing the screen. If you are blind or have low vision, this feature helps you navigate your device. Here's how to get started. 
You can ask Siri to turn voiceover on or off instantly, add it as an accessibility shortcut, or in settings, scroll down and tap accessibility, tap voiceover, and then tap the switch to turn it on. Voiceover on, settings, accessibility, back button. When voiceover is active, your device will read out what's on your screen and the way you navigate will be slightly different. Let's go to the home screen. If your iPhone or iPad has Face ID, slide up from the bottom edge of the screen. You'll feel a gentle haptic response and hear two rising tones to let you know that you've completed the gesture. To go to the home screen on an iPhone or iPad with a home button, just press the home button. With voiceover on, touch the screen anywhere to hear the item under your finger. FaceTime. Double tap to open. This works with almost any word, feature, or app name. You don't have to tap directly on something to locate it. Instead, quickly swipe right or left with one finger anywhere on the screen to find the item you want, and voiceover will read out each item as you swipe. Calendar. Wednesday, March 24, photos, camera. You can also drag your finger over the screen to hear every word that you touch. Maps, notes, books, home, doc, messages. Double tap anywhere on the screen to open or activate an app, link, or button. Messages, edit, button, compose, button, messages, heading, search, search field, dictate, Button, conversations, Eliza blog. To have voiceover pause reading a section of text, tap once with two fingers. That's what I was thinking. I remember her saying that. Tap once with two fingers again to have voiceover continue reading. Her favorite type of cake growing up was pineapple upside down cake. Ooh, yummy. <laughs> now let's open control center. Tap the status bar at the top edge of the screen. So I'm going to jump forward a little bit, but that provided a good overview of yes, some of the yes. things Jeffrey was, was covering. Um, so I want to call out that in addition to voiceover, there's also spoken content features um, that are available on the iPhone. And these are basically um, kind of an on-demand screen reader that you can um, turn on and turn off kind of as, as needed. Um, and it, this is for users that are often um, low vision or might have some difficulty reading content on the screen. Maybe they have uh, reading challenges or things like that, or maybe the user just wants to be able to have content read aloud to them. So there can be a lot of applications for spoken content. Um, and basically, uh, once this is enabled within the settings, the accessibility settings menu, um, you have the ability to swipe down with two fingers uh, from the top of the screen, and this will basically play all of um, play aloud all of the content, and it will read it out to you, um, which can be really helpful. But sometimes, you know, we want to be very specific about things on the screen that we want to read, and that's where um, there's a widget that's called the speech controller that you can also turn on. And this is basically just a little tool that sits on your screen, and you can move it around with your finger and you can then interact with it uh, through, through some touch, touch gestures. And it has the ability to um, speak all of the content on the screen, or you can use a tap and touch uh, method um, to basically touch on selected items on the screen and just have those spoken aloud. So this can be a really great tool um, that's built into iPhone. Um, we have another short video that highlights this a little bit as well. Let's just advance forward. With spoken content, you can have your iPhone or iPad speak selected text or the whole screen and give you feedback and text corrections as you type. We'll walk you through how to use speak selection, speak screen with the speech controller, and how to customize your spoken content settings. Let's get started. First, go to settings, then accessibility, then spoken content. Speak selection will read aloud text you select in apps like notes, mail, books, Safari, and more. When you turn on speak selection, the highlight content option will appear. This will highlight words, sentences, or both as they're read aloud. Here's what speak selection looks like in action. Just select the text, 
then tap speak. One of the key factors to creating a super bloom is a change in precipitation patterns. What makes the Your iPhone or iPad can also speak the entire screen. To do this, turn on speak screen in the spoken content settings. After you turn it on, you can swipe down from the top with two fingers to read, or you can ask Siri to read the screen. For quick access to the speak screen controls, tap speech controller, then tap to turn it on. The first time the speech controller appears, it will be in the upper left corner, but you can move it wherever you like. To see the controls, tap the arrow. To hear all text on the screen, press the play button. Hey Candace, last year, Toby and I took a road trip to visit his parents in Lakeland Village, a little town. You can also pause speak screen. Skip ahead, skip backward, and change the speaking rate. Nice. To start speak on touch, tap the finger icon. Then tap or drag anywhere on the screen to hear the text under your finger. Super bloom isn't a scientific term, but there's no better way to describe this phenomenon. Deserts and canyons get on yeah. You can also customize how you use spoken content in the spoken content settings. Here are a few. So that's a little bit of an overview, um, but that was the speak screen uh, tool that I was demo or was explaining, um, and it is available on both iPad and iPhone, and the, the experience is very consistent across the two. Um, so that covers a little bit of the kind of screen reader and spoken content that's within the iPhone as well as the iPad. Um, we also wanted to talk a little bit about the Zoom capabilities. Um, so within that accessibility settings menu on iPhone, um, there's also a uh, Zoom settings. Um, and when you turn on Zoom, um, there's a couple ways you can magnify the screen with the Zoom tools. Um, the first way is by learning gestures. So once Zoom is turned on, um, there's a couple tapping gestures you can use on the screen um, to zoom in and zoom out and also kind of navigate your way around the screen. Um, so when Zoom is on, you can basically use three fingers and do a double tap, and that's going to zoom you in. And you can then use those three fingers and drag around the screen, and you'll move to different regions on the screen. And when you want to zoom out, you take three fingers and you double tap again. Um, so those gestures are really helpful to learn, and it's really good to, to learn them as a basic foundation. Um, but there's other methods that are a little bit easier to zoom in and out. Um, and basically, uh, and, and there are a couple different zoom modes. So there's a full screen mode that will zoom in all the way. And then there's also a window zoom mode, which will have kind of a digital lens on the screen uh, that makes up a box and it will only zoom in within that window and you can move it around the screen. Um, so there's different use cases for these tools. And within zoom settings, you can actually increase the magnification size all the way up to 15 times uh, zoom. Um, so you can kind of set your default there as well. And similar to the speech controller, um, there's also something called the zoom controller. And I have an image here on the screen of kind of what that zoom controller looks like. And it's a really large image. It doesn't actually appear that large um, on the screen itself, but essentially it's a circular widget um, that kind of looks like a, a target and it has a little ball on the inside that you can control and move around. And basically the zoom controller, when you interact with it, um, will allow you to more easily zoom in and out. Um, there's a couple of gestures you can do. You can basically double tap on it to zoom in, double tap on it to zoom out, um, or you can press and hold on the controller and move your finger around the screen and it will maintain that level of zoom until you release. And so we find that these two tools, particularly for, for low vision users are really helpful. The combination of the speech controller and the zoom controller together. So that's a little bit on zoom on iPhone. Um, now, well, I guess that kind of wraps up what we wanted to highlight on iPhone, um, given that we have a lot, a lot to cover and there's a lot of different devices. So we wanted to mention a little bit about Android and Android accessibility as well at a very high level. 
And as Jeffrey was mentioning before, there's a lot of comparable features and functionalities uh, between iPhone and Android. And so on Android, there's something called TalkBack, um, which is the built-in screen reader. And it's very similar to VoiceOver. Um, it also relies on swiping gestures and taps. Um, and those are set up in a very, uh, very similar way. Um, and there's also a spoken content option called select to speak um, that can allow you to use um, two fingers. You basically swipe up from the bottom of the phone uh, and it will turn this on and there's a play button. Uh, and then you can also basically press on the screen and drag your finger uh, to create a box around multiple items. And when you release, um, those items will be read aloud. And this is a really effective tool. Um, the thing is it's only really available on some of the more premium Android devices like the Pixel devices and some of the Samsung devices. Um, so again, like, you know, TalkBack is usually consistent across all Androids, regardless of the version and the device, but there is a little bit of inconsistencies on certain features uh, such as um, select to speak. Uh, but on the devices where it's available, um, it is a really great tool. Um, and then there also within Android, um, there is a similar capability to do magnification. Uh, so you do have a full screen zoom and window zoom modes as well. Um, and you can also adjust um, the contrast level and go into things like dark mode to do high contrast, um, which is something you can do on iPhone as well. So it is a pretty similar experience. Um, we just wanted to kind of call that out. So next, transitioning a little bit, uh, a little bit quickly, but we want to cover cover a lot of different um, devices and different features. So now we're kind of shifting gears, um, still on the topic of Google, but kind of moving from Androids um, more into Chromebook devices, um, which are used, you know, within a lot of of school systems, um, and so. There, there are a lot of built-in uh, accessibility features there. So that's what we want to talk about today. So within um, the Chrome operating system is what Chromebooks run. And within the Chrome, Chrome OS, um, there are built-in accessibility settings. And how you can access these is you can basically, um, there's like a time clock on the, on the lower, um, uh, lower menu bar. You can click on that and you can then select settings or you can use Alt Shift plus S and that will open up the settings menu. Um, within settings, there is an accessibility option that you can click on. Um, and visually this appears as a, a person with raised hands, which is kind of the universal accessibility logo. Um, and within here, um, it displays basically, you know, all the settings that are there. And there is also an advanced settings option as well um, that does have a little bit more explanation and more customizations um, for the accessibility features. So you can open this up, you can check out those options and you can basically toggle them on and off um, as needed. And so we're gonna go into a little bit of um, what some of these options are. So first of all, there's something called Chrome Vox and that is the built-in screen reader um, that comes within the Chrome operating system. Um, it's designed primarily for, for blind or low vision users. Um, it basically allows them to interact with the Chromebook uh, without having to necessarily see the screen. Uh, and they can, those users can use keyboard shortcuts um, to basically toggle through and everything on the screen will be communicated audibly um, through a computer generated voice. So screen reader voice um, through, the, through the Chromebook. And it's pretty easy to turn this on. Um, you can use, you, you can go through that accessibility menu I was describing and you can click it to toggle it, uh, or there is a shortcut. You can press Control Alt plus Z and that will turn on or off Chromevox. Um, and just as kind of a basic, basic magnet or basic navigation, um, couple of uh, uh, shortcuts, basically the default. So when we think about screen readers, there's always what we call a modifier key, which is the primary key that you're using um, to navigate around. And on Chromebooks, that default modifier key is typically the shift key uh, plus the search key. And when you press those keys together, um, you, can, you can press them in conjunction with other keys to take other actions. So if you press those uh, Chromebook mo or Chromebox modifier, so control plus shift, and then you press the up arrow or the down arrow, um, that's gonna navigate you forward and backward. And you're gonna hear that next item read aloud to you on the screen as you're moving through. And when you wanna select an item, you're gonna press the shift key plus search, 
and plus the space bar. And that's gonna select the current item um, that you just heard on the screen. And so we'll see as we go through and look at um, an overview of other screen readers on PCs and Macs, we'll see that this kind of framework and setup is very similar um, across different devices, although there are different keyboard shortcuts and a little bit of different functionality. Uh, so a couple more things to cover on Chromebooks. So um, there is a spoken content option as well. Um, as I mentioned, this is available on some Androids, but it does exist on Chromebooks, and it is called Select to Speak. Um, this is the spoken content tool. Um, it's a less robust screen reader, um, but you can use it for on-demand speech. And basically it allows you to highlight um, specific content on the screen. Um, and you can basically do that by clicking and dragging with the mouse once you've turned it on. And it's gonna place a box around that content. And you can press the, um, you press and hold the search key while doing that. And it's gonna read that content aloud to you. And so this is a really useful tool. Basically, um, if a user is having difficulty seeing the screen, like maybe they're, they're low vision or just having some challenges, um, if they can just, if they have some usable vision and they can tell that there's a text box there, for example, or a menu, um, they don't need to really see, be able to see the detail. All they have to do is be able to click and drag uh, their, their mouse um, around that item. And with the search key and with select to speak turned on, um, that will be read aloud to them. So really helpful uh, spoken content tool that's really easy to use uh, within your Chromebook. All right, well, that wraps up a few things we wanted to highlight on Chromebooks. Um, there are also magnification tools within Chromebooks as well, um, ability to customize uh, high contrast settings, uh, things like that. Um, but we wanted to focus more on just kind of the screen reader and uh, spoken content. So now we're transitioning a little bit into talking about Windows PCs and accessibility. Uh, Jeffrey, you wanna yes. start here? For the Windows PC, and um, le le let's pause a little bit of time here and talk about commonalities that we're seeing, like, because now you already talk about Chromebooks, uh, and, and also we will talk about PCs and Macs, and we will see that all of these three devices, all of these main computers will have accessibility on it. So the three of them will have some kind of screen reader, um, they will have uh, they will have magnification, they will have some kind of um, spoken content features, and also they will have uh, some kind of contrast modes that uh, we can use dark mode, we can use high contrast. So those are basic settings and, and there will be others, but those basically, um, one of the commonalities that we are finding now that they, they didn't happen in the past is that we're seeing more consistency within accessive in the accessibility spectrum all, all operating systems. Yes. So when we talk about iOS, we talk about the um, on the Android, and now that we're talking about computers, we're seeing accessibility in all of them. So in Windows, for, for example, if we press Windows and the letter U, we will get to the ease of access or, or to accessibility settings now, that now they call it on Windows 11. And then we will have the vision session on the windows and the vision session. We have the, uh, the narrator, which is the screen read, the built-in screen reader on windows, which is quite of acceptable for using on the PC, for using on some reading, if you if reading your email, reading a little bit of word documents, a little bit on the web. And also you can on windows, there are other alternatives like the JAWS screen reader, um, there is uh, also a free uh, screen reader called NVDA, and as in Nancy, V as in Victor, D as in Delta A. So that's another screen reader that you can use on Windows. So Windows allows you to do a little bit of more flexibility on screen reading. Uh, on the vision section, you can find also um, things to uh, change the icon size, the text size, on the pointer size, like to bear, put if you everybody sometimes will have some difficulties of finding that that pesky uh, yes. pointer that is going everywhere. Yes. So if you a, a little trick on Windows, if you go to the Start menu, right to start, and you type one pointer size, and then you go and you access the pointer size option. The first option that you get is that you can put it on a bigger. There is a, like a, a like a slider, and you can 
change the pointer size right away very big. And also you will have options to change it to uh, invert. So when the background is dark, the pointers, the pointer will be white on a, some kind of light. And when the background is light, then the pointer will be black. So there are some options that you can find right away on Windows. And you can change uh, options for the text cursor. And there is the Windows magnifier. Again, yes. if you go to the start menu, you add, uh, type magnifier, you can open the classic Windows magnifier, which now will have some options, will have some spoken content options as well. So yes. every time that you are in Word, for example, you have some lines, you can, um, you can click anywhere on the screen and then you can press Alt, the Alt, the Control and the Left click on the mouse and it will start reading from that position on and it will uh, it will place a box while it's reading. So if you can follow, if you want to follow up while reading, you can do that as well. So those are some of the basic um, uh, accessibility options that you can find on Windows. There are also color filters. So it's very interesting. We, uh, we encounter sometimes some students that have extreme light sensitivity. So they we need to experiment with color filters, some kind of degrees of color filtering. So they will basically sponsor some transparency, working with some filters that allows them to not, that the content is not quite so bright and it doesn't hurt so much. And we have students that are the contrary, that they need to the, the screen to be very bright. So we will put the brightness level to 100% and very, uh, very light or very dark in order for them to see. So there are alternatives that we that we uh, that we select when we work with um, screen reader or with magnification on Windows. Yes, um, Jeffrey touched on uh, on narrator and some of those alternatives. Um, there were a couple uh, shortcuts and and kind of uh, yes, yeah, keyboard controls we wanted to kind of call out there. Uh, Jeffrey, do you want to cover those or do you want me to cover? Uh, them? Yes, for the narrator, it is um, um, Windows Control and the Enter key. If you press that right away, you will get the built-in screen reader, and you can press that right away to turn off the narrator for the magnifier, and this is one that people use it a lot. Um, if you press Windows, the Windows key and the plus sign anywhere, no matter where you are, you press Windows key and the plus sign on, on the keyboard, you will get access to the Windows magnifier. And then uh, it, the first time it will open. And if you continue pressing this key, it will zoom in. And if you want to zoom out, you press Windows key and the minus sign. Yes. Uh, in order to zoom out and there are like alt control and the letter i to inverse the screen um, to invert color so so what uh, there are so some few keystrokes that you can use for the magnifier and the one that i mentioned for the um, spoken content which is alt control and the left um, the left mouse please anywhere on the screen yes um and, and just a couple other things too uh for for narrator as well so jeffrey mentioned um how to turn it on and off uh but you also um similar to how we talked about with chromebooks um you have a modifier key for for narrator um so typically this is the caps lock um, or the insert key and you basically use um for primary navigation um use the narrator key plus right and left arrows um, and that will allow you to move from the next item or to back to the previous item. Uh, and then if you use the narrator key plus enter, um, you can make a selection on the screen. Um, so those are a couple of navigations that are kind of consistent um, with narrator as well. Um, and then just to add on a couple of things that Jeffrey was mentioning with the Windows magnifier and the spoken content, um, once you turn the magnifier on, uh, which is that Windows key and the plus key, um, you can then um, basically you can adjust your, your default zoom. Uh, so within the settings, you can set it to a certain percentage. And typically it's set to hundred percent, which actually means that every time you press the windows key and plus, it's gonna advance from 100% magnification to 200% yeah. to 300. It's like a double the size, double the size, yes. double the size. Yeah, yes. which is a huge jump. So within that um, accessibility menu under magnifier, 
you can adjust that default zoom level to 25%. And so each time you press the Windows key in plus, it's gonna move from 100% to 125 to 150. Um, and it's gonna be much easier to kind of go in and out. And then when you wanna zoom out, um, you'll use the Windows key in minus. Um, and if you press the Windows key in escape, it's gonna um, turn off the magnifier altogether. So that's how you can kind of close it. Um, and there are three different zoom modes within magnifier. There's the full screen zoom, which zooms the screen all the way in. Uh, there's a lens mode, which creates that digital magnifying glass that you can move around the screen um, and just, uh, just basically zoom in on that region. And then there's a docked magnifier that will sit um, at either the top of the screen or you can move it around. And it basically will just zoom in one region of the screen. And as you move your mouse on the rest of the screen, which isn't zoomed in, whatever the mouse is over, it will be magnified in that, um, in that docked region. Um, so this can be helpful for you know, reading across documents and things like that. And when you want to go between the zoom modes, you can use the control key plus the alt key and the M key, which is for, for magnifier. Um, and that will let you cycle through those different uh, modes when you have magnifier on. So you can kind of play around with them. You can test them out and see which one works best. Uh, for those for those use cases. And um, just one thing to add, uh, Jeffrey also talked about the spoken content that's within the magnifier tool. Uh, so that's that you can use the control and alt key plus a mouse, a left mouse click, and that will read the content that's under the mouse. Um, but one thing to call out, this is an option for Windows 11. Um, it's not available in Windows 10. Uh, so the magnifier is, but this spoken content uh, feature isn't. So something to kind of keep in mind. Um, as you're looking at different uh, versions of, of Windows. We'll cover part of the, uh, we try to do a high level of the yes. accessibility settings. There are a lot, and we try to cover a, a lot of what it's on Windows. Let's go quickly to the map. I can start this one off, Jeffrey. Yes, Please. sure, let's do it. So a little bit about um, accessibility on Mac. Um, there's also a settings menu, and there's a couple ways you can access this. You can click the Apple logo in the upper left-hand corner, and then navigate down and click system preferences, and that'll open up a bunch of settings. And in the middle there somewhere, there is is an accessibility option, um, but there's also a shortcut uh, for the accessibility shortcuts menu, uh, which on Mac you can use option plus command and F5, and that's going to open up just kind of the key um, items. And within this uh, accessibility menu, kind of like others we mentioned across other devices, um, the vision tools are located at the top. And some of those options available, there are, you, you'll notice some consistencies here between uh, the Mac operating system and the iOS operating system for Android. There's some similar tools, but they work in you know slightly different way. Uh, so we have voiceover here as well, um, but that's, it's a computer version of, of, of the voiceover screen reader. Um, there's also zoom tools, uh, there's display adjustments, um, and some spoken content tools as well. So we're going to cover a couple of these um, just at kind of a high level. So I already talked a little bit about voiceover uh, on Mac. Um, but basically with voiceover, there's a couple ways, a couple shortcuts. Um, you can use the command key plus F5 and that'll turn it on and off. Um, and then also similar to the other screen readers, there's a modifier key, um, which is usually set up as the caps lock um, or the control plus the option keys. Um, and you can change those modifier keys within settings. And similar to um, Windows Narrator or other uh, screen readers we talked about on other platforms, you can use those modifier keys uh, plus the navigation arrows um, to move from one item to the next. And then you can use those modifier keys plus return or which is the enter key on Mac uh, to select an item. And so this is just kind of the very basics of screen reader navigation, but it's enough to allow a user to at least um, start to turn it on and start to hear um, the Mac read uh, content to them and be able to make selections um, as they're moving across uh, the screen. Um, Jeffrey, before I cover um, briefly the spoken content in Zoom, is there anything you want to add on VoiceOver on Mac? No, no basically VoiceOver uh, built-in screen reader um, it has the same name, works a little bit, bit different. Yeah, we're almost there. We just we're, wanted to talk. <laughs> we're almost, almost done, almost done. <laughs> so then for, like you said, VoiceOver left and right to move between items, VoiceOver space bar to select the, the item. And also there are other settings that you can activate quick nav in order to use just use the arrow keys to yeah. navigate. 
And of course, beyond these basic navigations, there's many more keyboard shortcuts and sure. functionalities that are much more complex and can really help users. Uh, but um, they, we just want to kind of cover the, the basics. So it does take a while to, to train on those and learn those, but it's, it's good to have somewhere to start. So we want to talk briefly about spoken content in Zoom. And again, some of these options are very similar to what's available on iPhone, um, but they're used in a little bit of a different way because you know, you're on a computer, so you're using a keyboard and you need to use some keyboard keyboard shortcuts. So um, as an alternative to voiceover, there is a spoken content tool um, that is available uh, within the spoken content section. And this is called uh, Speak Selection. And when you turn this on, um, this is kind of the equivalent of the select to speak that we covered on, on Chromebooks. This is like the Mac equivalent. And basically what it allows you to do is highlight content um, with your mouse, or you can use like command A to highlight all. Uh, and then you use a um, keyboard shortcut, which is uh, usually set to option plus tab as the default. And when you press those keys with the highlighted content, um, the, the Mac will read everything aloud uh, to you. Um, so this is like basically a selective speak tool. So you can kind of use it as needed uh, on demand, um, but you do have to turn it on and you do have to check to see uh, what your default keys are before you use it. But it can be super, super handy. Um, and then, you know, talking about Zoom tools as well, um, there are equivalent Zoom tools in Mac uh, that are very similar to what's available on PC. Uh, as well as on Chromebooks. Um, and you can use the option key plus command plus the eight key. I'm not really sure why it's the eight key. Um, I don't know but, either. <laughs> but that does turn on Zoom. And there are three modes. Uh, there's a full screen mode, a split screen mode, and there's a picture in picture mode, which is basically like a lens magnifier, kind of like what we talked about on Windows. Um, and then lastly, in addition to those Zoom modes, there's kind of a cool little hidden feature you can enable within Zoom that's called hover text. Um, and this is something built by Apple specifically for, for low vision users. Um, and basically once you turn it on, it's really simple. All you have to do is hold down the command key and anything that the mouse pointer is over uh, will be magnified into a very large text box on the screen. Um, and you can basically adjust the size of that box, uh, make some customizations, but essentially this is really useful for things where you can't pinch to zoom or you don't want to um, you don't want to use one of the magnifier modes. You can use this on like menu items or static items on the screen that you can't enlarge. Nice. Um, Thank you. So, so with that, much. I think that that gives our yeah. our overview. I mean, there, as we mentioned, there's a lot of complexities here. Of course, we didn't dive very deep, but we wanted to give give a sense of things and want to open it up for for some questions. Thank nice. you so much, Jeffrey and Sean. That was amazing. Um, we do have a question in the chat. Can you go over what a modifier key is on a Mac? Okay, yes, modifier keys. Modifier keys, when we talk about all modifier keys, we talk about the keys that you need to press in combinations with other keys in order to perform a command. Modifier keys on the Mac will be the ones usually to the left of the space bar, for example, the command key. Um, the option key, which is the second one, control key, which uh, those three keys are modifier keys. Also the shift key is considered a modifier key that you use in order to make a capital letter. And sometimes you use the, mod mod the shift key, like for example, command shift A uh, on Zoom to activate audio. If you are on a Mac, command shift V to activate and deactivate video. So those are, when we talk about modifier keys, those are the modif uh, what we are mentioned about. On Windows, yeah. there will be the Alt key, the Windows key, which are the, to the left of the space bar and the control key. And, and the caps lock key usually is considered a, a, a modifier key. Yeah, and there's usually a default. So like Jeffrey was saying, like yes. on Mac, that default might be control plus option. And basically within the settings, within the voiceover settings, you can um, you, yeah, you can see what it is and you can then change it to whatever works best for you and whatever fits your, your preferences. There is a question about if Siri can understand French and Spanish. Oh, yes, they can do, but only the difference between Siri and other um, a voice assistant. And by the way, we use Siri a lot as a digital accessibility. Yes. So we use Siri for making phone calls, sending text messages. So for example, if I take my Siri here and I do something like text Sean Doherty, 
thank you so much for helping me today on this great presentation. Your message to Sean says, thank you so much for helping me today on this great presentation. Send it? Yes. Hmm. Very yes. easy. <laughs> Very so easy. We, we use it a lot. So definitely Siri is something, the only, the only thing is that Siri is not bilingual. So you need to set Siri to the language that you want to use. For example, um, um, uh, my Spanish is my la native language, but I use Siri on English. And then, but you have the alternative to add a second keyboard, like uh, you can add the French keyboard, you can add the Spanish keyboard plus the English keyboard, keyboard, and then you can use the microphone button to dictate in that language. For example, if you wanted to dictate in, in Spanish, you change your keyboard to Spanish, and then you press the microphone and you will be able to dictate in that language as well. If I remember correctly, Jeffrey, I think that's within the series and search menu, right? Within iPhone, is that right? Yeah, uh, to change a Siri language is on the language. Siri Siri and search. Yes. Yeah. And to so, add a to add a second keyboard, you go to general, you go to keyboard, and you have a second keyboard there. And then another, um, we covered a little bit of Android and a little bit of Chromebook. If people are hungry for more Android and more information on PC. Um, so is, do you have any suggestions for where they can hear more about accessibility features on Androids and PCs? Oh, yes. Um, uh, basically, another thing that we are seeing very good is that there are very good articles, videos, audio um, coming even from the main sources. So the two videos that we presented today were from Apple, and we are seeing very good uh, um, articles about how to enable accessibility options on all devices. So if you wanted to learn more, for example, how to work, I, I, I saw also another question about Windows 11. So if you wanted to, to talk about, uh, learn about Windows 11 accessibility options, so you can do a search and accessibility options for Windows 11 for deafblind users, for example, or for uh, people with hearing disabilities. So you will see, uh, lots of information about accessibility and the good things are the those are from the from the creators so you will see good art articles from apple accessibility microsoft accessibility uh, um, accessibility on android and all the operating systems it sounds like we might need to have you guys back for another session in the future <laughs> yeah definitely yeah. Like Jeffrey was saying, the the uh, for Microsoft, the Microsoft support pages, um, you could search on the Microsoft support site, and they have pretty good forums of documentation, um, as does Apple. And on the Google side, uh, there is also Chromebook uh, yeah. support as well. So th those are like some good starting places if you want to understand uh, the, some of the keyboard shortcuts and functionality. Um, that we were talking about today and and even you can use your device you can say to your google device hey google what's what's the keyboard uh to uh, to copy text on windows and it will tell you oh, the keyboard to copy text on windows is control z so it will give you some some clues that that even you can use your um your speakers to do some searching and especially now that they change um, now they're using a, a good model. Now they allow us to do multi-touch gestures. So we are seeing improvement on, on screen reading and low vision and also on model disabilities on the Android, Android operating system and the new ones. Great, thank you. Um, so we're gonna have to have you back to talk more Windows, to talk more Android. Thank you, Jeffrey. Thank you, Sean. We also wanted to share our contact information as well, um, just in case anyone wants to get in touch with us. J Colon, J C O L O N at lighthouse sf.org. And then Sean Dory, S D O U G H E R T Y at lighthouse sf.org. And we have another one, which is even more easier. Access technology, just AT, just AT as in access technology, AT at lighthouse sf.org. So that's our can, alias for our team. So that, yes, so, so you can you can questions. write us there and, and share with us. And and yes, we wanted to hear people to, to hear your voices. And and first of all, thank you for inviting us to uh to share accessibility and to share tech week with us. This is great. Um, thank you guys so much. This has been wonderful. I'm so happy that you could join us for Tech Week this year. It was fun. We enjoyed it. Thanks for thinking of us and including us. It was great. Absolutely. Okay. So stay tuned. Hoping to have return presenters. Thank you everyone so much.